Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over something uh, quite simple but effective and it's going to be a way to make foliage like trees, grass, bushes or whatever have a slight colour variation um, so that you break your scene up a little bit. So if I just show you what this means, you can see here I've got the three different kinds of uh, low poly trees in my uh, foliage here. You can see I've got the three different trees here. From this little uh, preview you can see that they've all got the same colours but if I paint them in you can see I'm getting different colours in there. Okay. Now these won't change unless I paint more foliage so if I paint more foliage it will it will reassign some of the colours uh, but during run time this will not change anything at all so the colours will stay the same and this is both you see we're getting different colours on both the, the trunks here and on the tops um, so we're, we're getting a lot of different variations available to us. And it's actually a really, really simple uh, material. It's not even a blueprint. Uh, it's not any trick with any functions or anything. All we're doing is we're going to be using a gradient and then assigning a different shade from that gradient to each tree. Yay! So I've got my materials and things here, but I'm going to run this through uh, for you. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up Photoshop and we're going to create a gradient. So let's just choose a color sample. I'm going to go with rainbow because this is going to give us uh, a really obvious change, whereas the slight changes in green, uh, sometimes they can be hard to see. Um, so I'm going to go with a rainbow here and I'm just going to go with a, a straight line straight across. Boink, and there we go. We've got our rainbow. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to save this out. Where do we want to go? Where am I going to? Right. I always have to remember where my folders are. There we go. I'm gonna so, I'm just going to keep this as a PSD file. I'm going to call this rainbow grad underscore T. Alright, so we've saved this out. If we head back into Unreal now, we can import this in. There we are. Here it is rainbow grad underscore T. Now we will create a new material, and I'm going to call this tree rainbow underscore n. We'll open this guy up. Excuse me, one moment. It's one of those days. Oh no! You might be able to hear banging in the background. The, the bin men are here. They're collecting all the rubbish. Yay! Okay, so what we're going to do first is we'll drag our, our texture in. So we have our rainbow. We'll plug this into the base color. And that's it. No, so that, that's not it. All right, so you can see here now it's picking this up. It's giving us this this nice rainbow all the way across. Yay, rainbow! And if we were to apply this, close this down, and then head into each of our trees and assign the rainbow to where the leaves are. There you go. And then paint some down. You can see that. When it finishes uh, compiling those, the tops are all just going to be randomized rainbows. There you go. Because, you know, these are just low poly assets, so I've only ever intended to have a single color on, so they're not unwrapped properly, so we're not going to get a proper rainbow on them. Um, this obviously isn't what we want, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to head back into the material. Let's maximize this go real quick. And now what we're going to do is we're going to right click, find object position. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get a per instance random and then hold M and left click for a multiply. We'll plug these two in. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the position of an object and for each object it's going to get a random value. Then what we need to do is we need to get a component mask. The reason we're going to get a component mask, and we're going to leave this as RG, the reason we're doing this is because we need the coordinates. And if you look over here, you can see we've got this Z, Y, and X coordinate uh, indication here. Now, Z being blue is up and down. Now, we don't really care for the up and down. All we want is we want to get the top down X and Y values. So we see where they are in the world on the X, which is you know, side to side or the Y depth, however you're looking at it. We don't need the Z value, so we're going to mask out blue, so we don't want blue. Then what we're going to do 
is we're going to plug this into the UVs of our texture sample. So essentially, there we go, now you can see this is all just red. Because right now, the object position, it doesn't have an object, so it's just reading 0, 0, which is the top corner. What it's going to do is it's going to get the object position and then get a randomized location for it based on its X and Y and just move them around a little bit. What this is going to do is it's going to give us a different value for different trees. So now if we close this down, when that finishes uh, compiling, we should get trees with different colors, as you can see there. Pretty cool, right? And again, we can do the same with the, the actual um, the tree trunks. We can say, you know what, I want rainbow tree trunks too. Like so. And you can see, <coughs> excuse me, if we were to just grab a single tree here, move it, you can see as we move it, it's, it's changing the values for different trees. Whee! But you can see it's only affecting instances of the same tree. Every time we're going to select one and do anything with it, it's going to change the randomized uh, value on there. So we generally just want to leave those alone. Um, obviously, if you're going to move these around, but you're not going to have these being rainbow. Let's face it, we're not going to have rainbow trees unless you're doing some weird psychedelic kind of thing. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll put these back to how they should be. There we are. And now you can see the way that these are working. If we were to open these up, you can see that I'm just using a gradient for greens and a gradient for browns to generate different colored uh, foliage. So we go guys, a really, really simple material that will just help you bring a little bit more variation into your world. It's a really uh, cheap shader. Um, you don't need to worry about this being expensive and as they're on mesh instances, it's really not a problem. Hopefully some of you guys are going to be able to use that. Uh, hopefully this has helped some of you. Um, I have had some uh, requests for, you know, uh, materials that have more randomization in the colors uh, so there we are that's one way of doing it especially for foliage this is great for foliage um, see you guys next time